um, after the conference, I cornered one of the people from Denver Water. And after they've talked for a long time about the, the massive impacts, you know, they talked about not just the ski industry, but also the impact on tourism when, you know, your forests are all on fire, and so the news is all about how Colorado is a disaster area or whatever. After all this talk about, like, the ag impacts and the tourism impacts and all of these other logistical issues um, that uh, I asked him, I said, so this drought's pretty bad, and so what, how, long do you, how long could Denver last um, if it kept having droughts exactly like this one? And he thinks about it for a second, and he's like, okay, well, he's like, I think we could go five years. We could probably last five years if we keep having droughts like this 2012 drought. And I said, huh, okay. And he's like, and he's like you know, it would be bad. Like, it would definitely be bad. We'd all be on major water restrictions. You know, there would be, like, real containment of industrial water use. All of the trees in Denver would be dead. <laughs> um, but, but we could hang on. And, uh, and I asked him, I said, well, so what are the chances that something like that could happen? And he looks at me and he says, well, it's never happened before. <laughs> now, now as, as somebody who writes about accidental futures and disasters, this, this, of course, warms the cockles of my heart. Like, this is like, fantastic. I'll give you a drought, sucker. Um, <laughs> But, you know, as a citizen, it's worrisome, right? You sort, of want your, <laughs> you sort of want your public servants to actually be focusing on those risks and, you know, the people who are in charge of actually making sure that you have water all the time, you kind of want them to be on the ball. And, and in that moment, you know, where I'm thinking, oh, my God, I have such great material for my fiction, I'm also thinking, oh, my God, we're so fucked. Um, and, uh, and so that was... That was sort of like the, the, the that's, that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking about when I'm working on a book, and that's the kind of gap that I'm looking for, is that, that missed opportunity, that, that accidental future that comes because we weren't looking, or we didn't have the imagination, or we didn't have, um, we didn't somehow value our, the future risks enough, or we didn't assess those effectively. And um, I feel like fiction is one of those spaces where you can, um, sort of pull this interesting trick of empathy. You, you can generate empathy for people whose skin you've never lived in before. You can connect people to, uh, you know, people who you would no otherwise never be connected to. Um, and in the case of science fiction, you can connect people to our future selves. Um, we tend to discount our future selves. Who are we going to be in 30 years? Who knows? Um, who are, what, what life is our children? What, what life will our children lead? Who knows? You know, you're, you're really focused on this here and now spot, naturally, because we're in our skin, we're in our bodies, and this is our present moment. And this is where all the pressures are, right? We have to get to work. We have to pay our bills. We have to do certain things right now. So we always sort of emphasize our present selves and discount the value of the life of our future selves. And science fiction is sort of an opportunity to sort of pull a trick where you can actually give some weight to your future self and some value to your future self because you get to live in that version of the future that we're building today.